everybody, this is Big Papa from Big Papa's Barbecue. I just wanted to say how much I've been enjoying doing these videos for my recipes and my reviews. I hope you've enjoyed them too. If you have, if you'll go to my YouTube channel, if you'll subscribe, if you'll like, comment, and let me know what I'm doing good, what I'm doing bad, and also share with your friends. Today we're going to be doing something special. We've got American Wagyu New York strips. We're we'll showing you how to throw them on the grill, low and slow, and then end them off with a reverse sear. And man, just look at these strips. Look at the marbling in these things. This American Wagyu Prime Plus. Oh, I can't wait to get them on the grill. I can't wait to get them cut. First thing we're gonna do though, this is earlier on in the day. I just took them out. First thing you wanna do is pat them dry. The reason you're doing this is so when you get ready to sear them, you'll get a better crust on them when you get all the moisture out. And what we're gonna do um, several hours before we cook them, we're gonna just put just a little bit of salt on them to start off with. I'm gonna use a special seasoning later on. We'll talk about that in a little while. All right, after you get both uh, sides patted down, all I'm using is uh, Himalayan pink salt and a grinder. I'm just gonna put a, a, a thin layer of salt on both sides. What that salt's gonna do is it's gonna continue to soak the moisture up out of the steak. We're really not doing this so much for seasoning as we're doing it to help dry these steaks up. So when we put them on for the reverse sear, they'll be nice and dry and get a good crust. Then you take them, flip them over. Do the other side. Then after you do that, you want to let them sit for at least two or three hours. It doesn't hurt for them to sit all the, uh, overnight, but at least two or three hours before you cook them. You'll just take these back. You can put them in a Ziploc bag. You can wrap them up, put them in a dish and wrap them, uh, put a cover on them. Let them sit in the refrigerator for about two or three hours before we come back and cook them. I'm going to be using my Weber kettle today. I'm going to set it up with the volcano cooker for indirect heat and then a hot sear afterwards. First, we're going to start with about a three quarter full charcoal chimney of charcoal. We're going to light that up and get that going first. We'll let that burn down for about 15, 20 minutes until it gets good and going. All right, this is what you want your coals to look like before you pour them over in there. So we're going to take this and pour them over into my uh, kettle and the volcano cooker. We're going to try this out. It's my first time using this thing, so it'll be new to me. Just pour them right there in the center. Those nice hot coals, close that up. And before we start, we're going to put a, okay, now we're going to go ahead and add a couple of hickory chunks in there. Close it back up. We've already seen that I've got them salted a couple of hours ago and let them sit. They've dried out nice. I've got my Weber kettle set up for an indirect heat. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some rub on them. This is a butter and spice company rub. It's from a guy, a friend of mine in Minnesota named Matt. The butter and spice company, what they've done is they've taken the dry powdered butter, put it in with the spice. So when all of that gets together and mixes together with the heat, it just makes a nice juicy, makes a nice bark on the outside. It's got great flavors in it. What you do is when you first take the, the cap off and you smell it, it smells awesome and out of this world. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each one of these steaks and I'm just gonna start with the spice. The good thing about this too is it doesn't have a lot of sodium in it, it doesn't have a lot of salt. So you can be real liberal with the spice on your uh, meat, whatever you're cooking, your steaks. Uh, it goes good with just about anything, pork, fish. But you can be real liberal because it doesn't have a lot of salt in it, so you're not gonna get it too salty. Just kinda pat that in so it'll stick. Flip them over. be doing a giveaway with the butter and spice company so look for uh, the info and look for the rules on that later on in the video and also on my Facebook page and again I'd like to thank Osley family premium beef for these beautiful American Wagyu New York strips he's uh, working in conjunction with me to offer a steak sampler pack I'll have info about that on my Facebook page and later on in the video it's going to be two ribeyes, two fillets, two New York strips, and two sirloins for a great price. It'll be $125 plus shipping and handling. So look for that special later on. The next thing we're going to do with these is we're going to get them from here. 
We're gonna get them over on the grill. I'm gonna put my temperature probe in each one of them because we're gonna do an indirect heat to begin with, kind of low and slow around 250 for however long it takes to get the internal temperature to about 115 to 120. Once it gets there, we're gonna take them and put them on the direct heat over the volcano cooker. So I'm gonna move these over to the grill now. I've got four steaks and only three probes. One of them is gonna be probeless. What you want to do is you want to insert it right there in the middle, just like that. Then once you take it, you want to put it on the outside on the indirect heat. And if you're wondering, I'm using my Inkbird wireless 4 probe thermometer. I've done a review on this. Um, I've got my remote screen on the inside. I'll be able to watch these steaks. So I'm just going to hang that right there. And I'm going to go in and kick back and enjoy some TV. All right. As you can see, they smoked off. They've got an internal temperature of about 125, 124. Now we're about to get my searing plate. Drop it right there in the middle. Pull our probes out. We don't need those anymore. All right, once you get them at a 120 to 125 internal temperature, you'll put them right over there to get the sear on them. You can hear that sizzle. It'll leave them on either side for about one to one and a half minutes. Now that we have the steak perfectly seared to a medium rare, we're going to slice it up. We're going to give it a try. Got a good medium rare. See the juiciness. Now we're going to try a bite and see how it tastes. Mm. Man, that butter and spice rub, you can taste it on there. It's not overpowering. It just kind of complements the beef. Good and juicy and tender. Don't forget to be watching for the giveaway for the Butter and Spice Company rubs. Also the steak sampler pack from Osley Family Premium Beef. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, subscribe, comment, like, share, and I'll see you next week. God bless.